Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Ryan here, 27 Ford there. Well, at least a good bit of it. It's Saturday morning. We don't have a plan, but we're gonna try to get something done. I've got my eyeballs on that firewall. That's gonna be an ambitious project considering I haven't planned a thing. Chances are we're gonna be able to figure something out or at least get it templated firewall. Gotta have one, right? It is what it says it is. It is the brake between the engine and the passenger compartment and should block some degree of fire. Now in this death machine, it's not a closed cab. So, you know, should something go catastrophically wrong here, while I don't want my feet to immediately catch fire, it's a little different than being, you know, caught in the cab of a car, especially a hot rod, especially like a chopped coupe or something. You really would like to have yourself a few extra seconds to get the hell out. This one, really the only way to be trapped in it is to be strapped to it. So we'll debate if that is even gonna be a thing in here. Now we just need to make a steel separation between the engine compartment and the passenger compartment. Now, you can buy firewalls that fit this shape that have the recess for these engines. I just think they look like firewalls that you bought that have the recess that have this engine. Um, we've reversed this one. I've already cut it and modified it. Turns out that modification wasn't even necessary. By the time I ended up redoing this, you know, and I welded it final. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if we'll be undoing that. I'm scratching my mind trying to remember. So I pulled the firewall out. I reversed it. After reversing the firewall, I guess I cut this section out and reversed that because otherwise this would have been over yonder on that side. Anyway, it's our starting point here. We got a bunch of spare parts collecting dust around here, which is great. We've probably hit critical mass, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I got a couple HEI distributors. We're gonna run points on this car, but the HEI distributor cap's bigger. So we can use that as a reference point. Sure. So we're just gonna plunk this thing in here. Obviously, the exact fitment and space room would be a little different based on the, you know, the intake and all that. That's probably not dropped all the way down. Let's just see. Because if this fits, which it does. So even though this thing isn't all the way seated, we're able to get this thing in, cap on and off. Basically, the further down it goes, the more fitment we have, but we obviously can't come out any further than this. So we'll build off the back of this lip right there. Pull from the old junk pile here. For 25 and a half. Don't think that's big enough, but it is 16 gauge, but maybe. Let's find out. It might just be, gang. So at this point, we basically are ready to make a pattern and then we'll turn that pattern into a template and turn that into a steel piece. However, when I bought that Mercury, I got two floor pans with it, two tow boards. One's over there. It's actually a really neat piece. It's aluminum. And then I got a factory style steel 4678 for Mercury. Hey, 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 right there. There we go. It's kind of neat. Uh, I've tried to sell it. I've tried to get it into the hands of somebody that needs it. And guess what? It, it never, it's right here. So it's kind of a neat piece. It has, whoa, the start of a transmission tunnel. So I'm gonna pull this in because if this can be our starting point, A, it'll look cool and B, maybe it'll make things faster. If not, we'll make it from scratch. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I said, no plan. Perfect. Obviously we can see it's significantly wider than the whole car, which should shock nobody, but should be a reminder of, you know, this is 20 years of automotive change, essentially. The 2627 Ford to the 4678 Ford. Cars got a lot larger. This was just the tow board. The car goes on beyond that. So this thing is basically like a buggy, a carriage, a car, car carriage. Now that this thing is in my way, I think potentially it could maybe work. I don't know. But what I do know is it's not gonna work without a template Anyway, so let's get after it. Basic templating, just get the overall size of the piece you want to start with, and, and it will always be easier to cut it down than make it bigger. Sure, 30 inches ought to do the trick. That's far more than we need. And we're roughly coming in from our upper part. 
to the subframe. Let's go a little, let's go all the way to the frame frame. Like I said, it's always easier to cut it down. I mean, what we really need is a foot. We'll just go ahead and say 16 or 18 inches and just see what, you know, what that does. So you guys have seen this thing around. You can pick them up at Michael's or uh, Sam Flax or Dick Blick or, you know, any art supply store or, you know, like normal people, I guess, these days, the internet. Support your brick and mortar stores. I'm just saying, gang, they're gonna go away if you don't. But for right now, this is gonna come in handy as a stepping stone to fire wallification. So this is kind of jammed in here and that's exactly what we want. And we can slide it down until we kind of get to a starting point, which I kind of want to come off this anyway. So I feel like that ought to be my straight edge. Just like that. Let's get some tape. All right, so now that we're kind of barely taped in, we're right at this edge. We can kind of trace this edge with our thumb. This is the edge of the steel on the inside until it runs out. You can feel the transmissions right there, you know. All right, got a couple Sharpies. Got an X-Acto blade because we may end up doing some trimming here. That's kind of the bell housing right there. It's one of those things though, gang. It's like... If you want to break the firewall, you know, build an angle, build an angle into it, as it were, and add a transmission hump, it's going to be different pieces, kind of, if you're a layman like, you know, me and you're watching this channel. Because compound curving this while breaking this is the whole metal thing that we're not set up to do here. Maybe we should just go ahead and build this piece right here and then Frankenstein in that piece over there. Would that make our lives easier? The answer is probably. So the thing to do here is clean this up. So we got some tools, straight edges, right angles. Right angles and straight lines will help you in metal work, you know, whenever you have the opportunity. Curves and compound curves are a lot harder. Doesn't mean we can't do them, but like, if there's no need, just draw, draw a straight line, gang. So I did mark the bend at where the floor pits. So in theory, if we cut it right here, take this part out, that'll fit in the firewall, and then where it curves to hit the floor, it'll go wider. So now before we get too hasty on cutting stuff, we're just gonna fold this over. I'm gonna make one quick cut here and we'll fold all this over. That will make our paper a little more rigid and if we boned it, we're not starting over necessarily. We can just kind of unroll it, add tape or whatever. This is the process, gang. This in the car to the bench to the car, so on and so forth, till it fits. Then you start cutting more rigid material, template, and you, you, you'll see, you know. It's freeze, temper it. Template's getting pushed back by the bell housing. That's not really an issue if you want the angle of the firewall to kind of creep into the car. Uh, it's kind of normal that way in a lot of cars. The situation we have here, if you look on the inside though, is that is going to make the driver's side of our panel interfere with the brake pedal. So I'm gonna start trimming away at the bell housing area here until we can get it to sit flat. And then we'll probably end up having to build our own transmission hump bubble curve to leave the most room for our pedals and the most room for our feet. So start by trimming small, get bigger. As you can see, we're already moving away from the pedal, so we're, we're headed in the right direction. And it does feel like my line's actually pretty accurate, because you don't want to be touching the transmission bell housing either, because, you know, vibrations and shake it -tude. I mean, we're not looking too bad. It really doesn't feel like we need to build this out of one piece. Uh, I feel like cutting this off and just making a flange for the floor to sit on, which is going to sit on this piece, which is what this is here for, is gonna be more than good enough. Again, you do you guys, but something under my feet is not where we're gonna spend the time to make stuff looking sexy. Let's put a little mark, like give it an extra inch or so, to figure out where the break would be. We can work all that out. Let's pull it out and see if we've got a harder surface to template on. Sure, that'll do. Gang, there's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm just gonna kinda use my hand as sort of a compass. 
just kind of land my wrist and make my mark. You can get, you know, a paint can or something. I mean, this is a good exercise too, because you gotta be able to get it in here without bending it to little pieces. All right, that's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, gang. I think this is actually good enough to go ahead and make it real. Next. Yep. Look, that's already got a transmission tunnel cut out of it. Perfect. Does that work? Pert near. I'm presently feeling like this is the most efficient use of materials. So let's go ahead and mark it and cut it. Gang, there's a lot of tools for this job. The one that I think is most underrated that I do use a lot on the show is uh, the jigsaw. If you have the right blade, this is a thin metal blade. It says right there, 1 64th to 3 64th. This is 16 gauge. I don't know what that is. One second. Pocket computer says that 16 gauge is 16th of an inch, 1 64th over spec for this. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a whirl anyway. 4 64ths, right? All right, dudes, uh, if you're using a jigsaw, you're gonna go through a lot of blades, but you shouldn't be any more precious about that than say like your cutting wheels, you know? I need to get this to stay in place. Somehow. Well. Gotta mark the turn for the floor here. So that'll be the bend. I'm use the old poor man's brake here. I got this thing lined up at the edge of the table. I'm gonna just clamp it down with a straight edge and then we're gonna beat the snot out of it with a hammer. Get yourself a great big old wanging stick. Add yourself some safety. Viola. Let's get that tacked in, I think. So I found some one inch stock. I think can make work right y'all to help just kind of place this whole thing. Let's cut a chunk, jam it in there. Gang, we're sneaking up on something. This area with the steering and the pedals is, that's a totally different beast. It needs a whole different set of like brain power to create the right template for that. I think we're going to end up cutting a lot of this out and moving it down and making pedal slots and there's all kind of stuff we need to do. So with the filming and all of that jazz, we're at about three and a half hours into this project. And I hate to say it, but that's about all the time I've got on a Saturday. All right, gang, I know this is a program about working on old cars and that's the majority of it. But the other part of this is, and I'll share it with you because this is as much for you as it is for me. I'm going through one of the busiest periods, if not the busiest period in my life. I'm working 50, 60 hours a week, and I have been on that schedule since late September. And I'm trying to keep this project going, and I'm trying to keep this YouTube channel going. And as you guys have noticed, we're also fostering a German Shepherd. Also, just completed the purchase on a massive investment project that needs a ton of work. That's why I'm calling it a project. I'll introduce you guys to that soon and there's gonna be a whole lot on the other channel. Let's make it better. Haven't made a video for that one in over a year, I'm sure. So what I'm getting at, gang, is I've got way more to do than I have time to do it. And I think a lot of you out there may be just like me. So I'm here to say, 
With stuff like this, you know, you gotta try to keep the fun in it. This thing can instantly become a burden or a chore or a stressful situation if I let it, that it's not moving fast enough or I'm not getting enough done. It's really important not to turn your fun projects into stressful situations. This could become a loathsome, stressful burden if I feel like I have to get something done and try to shoehorn it into a weekend. Instead, I came out for a few hours, I made some progress, put building blocks in place to build on top of and continue this thing and kind of keep it moving forward. I got to use my tools, I got to use my brain, I got to do a little bit of problem solving, a little bit of fabrication, and yes, we did make a small step forward, and this is all a build of many small steps. So I guess what I'm here to do is encourage you to take some time for yourself to spend tinkering on the projects you enjoy and also encouraging you to not let them turn into sources of stress. I'm saying this basically because this weekend, that's what I need to hear, and I think somebody else out there might need to hear it as well. Good luck on your projects out there. We will see you next time on Between the Sharks. We are gonna continue going down the road of building this 27 Ford, and at some point, whew, I'm gonna show you the great big, brand new, hot mess of a project that I've gotten myself into. Anyway, we'll see you next time on Between the Sharks.